Okay, so I want to uh, get into warping in Ableton 8, which is noticeably different than uh, Ableton 7. I've made one quick video on warping in Ableton 8, but I figure I could give you a little more detail, so let's go ahead and get into it. To recap, there's a couple differences right off the bat um, in warping in Ableton 8 as opposed to 7. One, your magnifying glass is up at the top by the beat markers. So right up here, this is where you're going to scan in and out of your track. The speaker remains the same. Now the other difference that you'll notice is that the warp marker, now you'll, you'll see potential warp markers lining across the, the, uh, the scene here or the song. And as we get in closer, what you'll notice is that it's just creating marker areas where it believes the beginning of each new beat is. And it's actually pretty good at getting at least very close, if not right on. So as you'll notice, if I, if I don't highlight anything, you'll see all these little gray arrows. And those are all potential warp marker areas. But you, it's still more flexible than that. You don't have to just strictly use those arrows. You can kind of uh, move them around and, and I'll show you how to do that. So the next thing is these markers are on the transients not necessarily on the beat like the older versions of Ableton. So for example I already know that my my warp marker is already good in the in the very beginning of the song that's already been set. So what I'm going to do is I'll set a little loop here which I've already done which is eight bars and I'll just play the track and see where the track uh, starts to get off. And I can definitely tell that, you know, over by the time we get over here, it's noticeably off. So it's slowly getting more and more off as time goes on. So let me get over here to bar 25, for example. And as we can see, bar 25 should be right where this marker is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get in close and take a look. It looks like the marker right here is accurate as far as being in the beginning of the beat for the most part. But we're going to get that closer in just a second. So what I would do now that I've double clicked to make that that warp marker is now I drag the warp marker to the beat just like that. And I actually find that warping songs manually is a little bit easier than the auto warp in most cases. Just because when it puts 10 different warp markers you've kind of got to move each one of them to fine tune it at times. So this might be a little easier. So now I'm going to come in close and now as you notice, okay great, we've got our, our marker but and it's on the right beat, but our our transient is still off from the marker. So Ableton has made a way to to solve that problem as well. What you would do is you're going to hold down the shift key, click on your mouse, and then you're just going to drag. As you drag, as you can see, now I'm moving the mark or the the actual wave right where I want it, which is great. So now that beat is on, and then I'll just continue. And it looks like it's getting off again, so let's uh, come in here and see how far we're off by. And it looks like we're off quite a bit. I'm going to actually move over here because we might be off so much I don't want us to be off a full beat and have me mistake. Yeah, that's okay. So we're off by about yay much. So I'm going to do the same thing. Double click and drag. And get it right on the beat. And then I'm going to shift, click, and then drag just to set it. So it's kind of a two-step process now, but it lends to being more accurate in, in the long run. And we'll just go through the track. Okay. 
So I'd say probably about once every 16 bars I'm having to fine tune this. And so there's our beat, drag that over, getting close, hold the shift key, drag it. Now as far as scrolling uh, with my loop, basically all I've done is I've created a loop over here of eight bars. I turned the loop on and then I darkened this loop area. And then when I hit the page up key or the page down key, I'm able to, to scroll across or, or the up arrow, down arrow. All right, so let me just go through the rest of the track and do this. Uh, it looks like this right here is where we're off. So take that, drag it over. Shift key. And right about there. Check here, make sure that we're still on. Yep. And, and then the important thing once we've got it warped is uh, we're going to turn off the loop so that it starts in place from the beginning. Set our start point to 1. And we are going to hit the Save button there. And th now we're good. Now let me show you a couple other things, um, or at least one more thing here. Let's say, for example, that we have a, uh, a beat that's off. I'm going to purposely throw a beat off real quick. OK, so that's off. All right. Well, let's say that the <clears throat> the beats next to it are completely on, and we don't want to affect the rest of the track, but we want to move this one beat over. Or maybe we just want to throw a beat slightly off, you know, ahead or behind, just to give it a little groove. Well, now what Ableton allows you to do is, let me unclick that. If you grab this, and let's say this is the one that you want to move or control, you just hit the control key. And now, as you see, when I hit the control key, it sets the markers next to it and locks them in. So now, when I click on this and move left and right, notice it doesn't affect anything outside of that area. So we could just move this one beat back and forth. And then once that's set, I could just as easily shift and drag and lock that beat into place or out of place if that's what you're going for. So that's a pretty cool feature too. I hope this has helped uh, give you a basic idea of warping in Ableton 8.